Ladies and gentlemen, Kirk Kennedy here. It's been a minute. I have not done uh, Kennedy's Corner, Kirk's Corner in a minute, but I felt like it would be good to jump in and just say what's up. Miss y'all. Sorry for the episode last week not being there. Strike is on vacation, and so I thought I'm going to take a vacation too. All right. Let's jump right into this. So many people across the whole world are listening, have listened to, are listening to Kendrick Lamar's new album, Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers. All right. What's good? What's good? What's good, Josh? The homies. What's good, Josh? What's good, Brandon? Good to see y'all this afternoon. All right. So let's talk. Let's talk. T Dog. Let's get it. All right, let's talk. So Kendrick Lamar dropped on Friday, three days ago. Uh, Mr. Morale the Big Step is five years. People have been waiting for this album. And people have been listening to it. You know, Kendrick Lamar is one of those artists. There are very few artists that when they drop an album, people think, I need to set aside time and listen to this album. Like, I need to actually listen to this joint. Like, you know, when most artists drop, let's just be honest, when Drake drops an album, People aren't sitting around like, I need to sit around and listen to this album. When Future drops an album, people aren't thinking that way, right? I mean, when Lecrae drops an album, when Andy Mineo, people aren't thinking that way. Shameless plug. I am humbled that some people do feel like that when I drop an album. They think, okay, it's Curry. We got to listen to this album. I need to sit, set time aside. I appreciate that. But Kendrick is that dude. Listen to. Album drops on Friday. And one of the things that I noticed in listening to the album was I wanted to pay attention to people's responses. As an artist myself, I understand and appreciate. I appreciate. And I agree with this, Josh. Josh has said this. Kendrick, the dude you're always looking for. I appreciate, as an artist, who tries to make albums that are not lowest common denominator rap music, right? I think a lot of rap music today is fundamentally lowest common denominator, right? You can turn it on, listen to it, and pretty much, if you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't. You know within the first five to seven songs what the rest of the album's going to sound like. That's where a lot of music is today. But Kendrick's one of those guys where you listen to his music and you realize this. And I don't know if many people realize how they view music, but when we listen to music, whether it's our favorite artists or new, there's sort of four steps in how we evaluate music if we're willing to give it more than one lesson, all right? So the first way we listen to music is by our preferences. Is this, does this, is this my preference? Do I like these beats? Do I like this style? Do I like the cadence? Do I like that? You listen to music and the first thing you're going to evaluate it by is your preference. Now, some of us can't get past our preferences, right? Some of us hear something and think, I mean, I ain't banging with this, Ejac, I don't like it, right? But those of us who are a little bit more mature, and I, and I do think it's an issue of maturity, those of us who are a little bit more mature can be like, okay, might not be my preference. Some stuff I like, some stuff I don't like, I can find some things about it, right? Second stage we listen to music by after preferences is expectations. Because there are times, and, and sometimes they can be the same things. Preferences can be expectations, but they can also be something different. There are times I've had low expectations for an album and it was my preference or wasn't, but the expectations blew me away. Either it was really whack, even though it was my preference, and I, or I thought it's not really my preference, but the expectation was going to be whack and it was incredible. So we listen to it from preferences. We go expectations. And then the next thing we do is we listen to music then as the artist is presenting it. Okay, so once we can get through preferences and expectations, then we're listening for, okay, what is the artist saying? What is he trying to communicate? Do I like what he's, what, what content is he giving me? What, how is he challenging the way that I think? That's usually the third layer of evaluation. And then lastly, we think about how does this fit into the broader genre that's happening? So how does this album fit into what else is happening, what other music is sounding like? Believe it or not, this is like a four-step criteria that almost all of us evaluate music by so i'm listening to kendrick's album and, I, and i'm before i even get into what i think i want to talk about comments that i started seeing happening right different people just 
across social media syndrome, right? I started hearing comments like this. Um, you know, CHH artists don't can never be as creative as Kendrick or can't touch Kendrick's creativity and all this type of stuff. And, and it was just, and it was, a, and, I, and I understand what they're getting at. And they were basically saying, I know one dude, a buddy of mine, one dude was just saying, I don't think Christian artists or CHH, he was basically talking about Christian rap artists are innovative. They're not innovative enough and things like that. And I was watching just different people on different social media platforms using Kendrick's album as sort of the, and the way he delivers his music as sort of the creative lens in which you evaluate how Christians create their music. And, and on one level, I think they're right. There's a lot of Christian music, Christian hip hop, CHH, that is not innovative, that kind of follows the trends or tries to be trendy and all of that stuff. But let's let's we need to be honest about about stuff like that. When we make comparisons to like CHH artists versus like a Kendrick. We need to be honest about a few things because I think it's somewhat of an unfair comparison to just simply label it as innovation or creativity or or delivery. I think that's an unfair uh, comparison to CHH artists, right? Now, I usually call my music biblical worldview music. I typically don't like the label CHH because it's kind of has... I don't even like the name Christian anymore because I don't even know what that means anymore, to be honest. I just call myself a believer and I do biblical world with music. But for the sake of this conversation, I'm a CHH artist as well. All right. Let me tell you why this is not a helpful comparison. And if you're making this comparison about listening to Kendrick's music, seeing how innovative and creative it is, and then comparing it to, to Christian hip hop artists, let me tell you why you should not do that. Okay. A couple of reasons why I think this is an unfair comparison. Number one, resources, okay? We're talking about Kendrick Lamar. He can call Dr. Dre, to, he can call any producer in the entire world. He can draw from the greatest producers in the world. I mean, people who have made billions of dollars, millions of dollars off of making music and, under, and setting the cultural pace for the music that you and I have come to love about hip hop over the years. Kendrick Lamar can call any of these people. He can call Dre. He has Dre on speed dial. Now, I don't think he, he didn't get production from Dre on this new album. He used some producers we've heard of, some people that he's kept in his camp, Alchemist, Terrace Martin, and things like that. But that's not the point. He can call anyone to get any beats that he wants. The average Christian artist does not come close to that capability. So if you're going to say they're not as innovative, we're not as innovative and creative, well, let me have access to the beats that Dr. Dre has. Let me have access to all of that Kendrick Lamar has. Now, I'm going to speak for myself because I don't know everyone else's how they do music. Here's how I do music. I have a concept for an album and I go to SoundClick. SoundClick is just a bunch of like beat pages that guys just have beats. And over the years, I have kept about 10 to 12 guys who I just saved there, saved them in my Safari thing. And I go there and I just click on their beats and I just listen to see what these guys said. That's why you'll hear stuff like Buck Roll or different names that come up on my music because that's who I find. I just find beats that I think I like and that I think will translate the message and the creativity I want. They, those beats are anywhere from $25 to like 75 bucks for a mastered WAV file. I go to the studio, I record my vocals, I send it to my buddy in Ohio. This is the only dude I like I let mix in, in my music. He gives it back to me, does what he does. I present an album to you guys, right? Yeah, Buck Row is one of the T-Dog. That's one of the dudes I get my beats from. I've been getting beats from him for years. I present it to you guys and then people, by God's grace, and I'm very encouraged by this, people will be like, man, what? This one, so I love your production, this and that. I'm not getting beats from Dre or Kanye or Pharrell or anyone. Kendrick can get beats from anyone. In a lot of his music, he has some of the best musicians in the world come together and create original sounds. Even Lecrae, with the resources that he has, can't do that as well. But even Lecrae and Andy Minio have greater resources than 99% of CHH. 
their music should be much better, in my opinion. In my opinion. I think some of us make much better music than guys like that without the resources that they have. So to compare Kendrick's creativity, you have to understand when you're listening to a body of work that Kendrick Lamar does, it's it's with some of the best musicians in the world, or he's crafting these men to do things, or women, whoever's making beats for him, to and singers to, to work on a vision that he has. Most of us cannot do that. Most CHH artists, when you hear like some singing in the hook, they bought the beat with the singing already in it. Right? That's not a fair comparison. This dude can hit one. Okay. Second reason why comparing the innovation of a Kendrick Lamar <clears throat> to CHH artists. Here's a second reason why. Lifestyle. Lifestyle. Again, I'm using myself as an example because I don't know everyone's different. I'm a pastor. I'm a lead pastor of a church. I have a wife and three children, two teenagers, one, one, one almost teen. I've been doing hip hop since I was in elementary school. I've loved it. I started doing Christian rap in 2005 under the moniker of Voice, and then in 2014 turned it into Kurt, turned myself into Kurt Kennedy. I sort of rebranded myself, right? I have a lot of responsibility. When I make music, it's almost like a hobby that I find time for to find beats, have a concept, write about it, go record it, get it mixed, put it all together, listen, make changes, do all this, and then present an album amidst a number, of, a, a bunch of other responsibilities that I have. Pastoring, preaching every week, caring for people every week, all of it, right? I am not a full-time rapper where this is my job, where I just go on tour and do this. Most CHH artists all have, they're, they're leaders, they're ministry leaders, they're, they, got, they got regular full-time jobs. They are not, this is not their living. They do this because they love the art form and they love the creative expression. You know, if you're a creative, music is a wonderful outlet. I also do photography, so I have other means of creativity, but music is one of the main ones I still love, which is why I still do it. Most CHH artists do not have the lifestyle of a Kendrick Lamar. They are not surrounded consistently around create creatives. Most of us or maybe one of the most creative people we know. We don't, we're not always around people who inspire us. So we wait for albums like a Kendrick to drop. We wait for a J. Cole, or we wait for artists that we respect so that we can get encouragement to be creative because we're often not in a culture of creativity. We're in a culture of sustainability. As, as ministers, we're trying to sustain people in the faith, help people persevere, conquer to the end, and so forth. Many of us are not just sitting around on tour, constantly rapping, constantly making beats, constantly writing around other people who are doing the same and being inspired. There's no way that we're doing that. So the lifestyle is totally different. It is a hobby. I don't care who it is. I don't care if it's God over money. I don't care who you like who. It's going to be a hobby for 99% of all CHH artists. It's going to be a hobby. A hobby that they invest in, and you hope people buy your music and appreciate it. Maybe you get some shows, sell some merch, and make your money back or whatever. There's no way we can compete with the lifestyle. Kendrick Lamar can surround himself. Even on the album, he said he had writer's block for like two years. Didn't know what to write about and prayed that God would give him some, some thoughts, right? This is, this is a problem. This is a problem. And let me see this, Brandon. Yeah, Ruzon, and I think he uses that as a deterrent for Kendrick, saying it could be an idol. Yeah, Ruzon's my dude. I bang with Ruzon. I know some people act like, I bang with Ruzon. That's my dude. I bang with him tough. I think he did. I saw a tweet or something that he said something like that. I didn't get into his argument. I don't know. If, if this is what he said, I don't know all of it. I didn't. But he is my dude. I bang with Ruzon. Good dude. I mean, probably going to get with him next month. Good dude. I like him. So if he said that, cool. And if he listens, then he might be one of the people I'm talking about. But but what I'm saying is like, we just don't have the resources. Most Christian artists don't. And we would love to. Can you imagine? Like, I'm just going, I mean, listen, I don't think I'm the greatest rapper. Of course not. But like, I can put out good music. I put out albums. Serial Killer Smiling Pictures was art. That was art. I do albumentaries, which is a genre that I basically created out of my own innovation. And I don't have the platform. I don't get the notoriety. I don't have it. 
But Serial Killer Smiling Pictures or an album like C4 or The Appendix, I would put any of those albums against whoever you think is the best. And they may be better rappers. I mean, it, but when it comes to putting together an album, I can be very creative and very innovative. But I do not have the resources or the lifestyle that some of these guys who do secular hip hop have. But Kendrick Lamar, are you serious? The most creative Christian artists you can think of, forget about me, they don't have the resources. So to compare that to them is, is an unfair comparison. Third, so we got resources, lifestyle. Third reason why comparing CHH artists to a Kendrick Lamar or secular hip hop artist who have the lifestyle and the resources is not a good move. Limitations, all right? Limitations. Kendrick Lamar is not limited in what he can say. He's not limited. So now I'm going to be honest with you. I am not one of those Christians who listens to the clean versions of albums. I don't. I want to hear what you're saying. I don't want to hear stuff beeped out. I don't want to, I don't want to hear none of that, right? I want to hear what you put forth, all of it. I, I'm a big boy. I can handle it, literally, and season of life. I'm a big boy. I can handle it. So I listen to Kendrick Lamar, and one of the songs that is the most talked about on that song is We Cry Together. Now, if you haven't heard the album, this is a song that talks about sort of interpersonal relationships between black in the black community, between black men and black women. And the whole song is basically an argument where he's saying, man, I hate these women, but he calls them bees. And she says, well, I hate you niggas and all this, right? They're going back and forth, right? There's so many F-bombs in that song that I don't think it's possible to have a clean version of it, right? But it's done in such a, if you've been in that situation or you've known people, or maybe you've even watched a movie like Baby Boy or some movie in the, of the hood where you see this couple, this black man arguing with this black woman, I hate you, I can't stand you, you, and they're going back. The whole song is that, right? Most believers cannot pull that off because we're limited. We, we're not allowed. We could, but we typically will not. We're not going to drop F-bombs and, and use some of the, the things that, <laughs> well said, bro, the clean version of that song is an instrumental. That's all you can get. You'll hear the, uh, the you won't get nothing out of that song, right? But we're limited. CHH artists, you know why we're limited? Because the Bible limits us. We're limited. And, this, and when, I, when I say limited, I don't mean in a negative way, right? We are restrained, right, in a biblical sense from taming, to tame our tongue, James 3, right? Ephesians 4, to speak what builds others up, right? Uh, 1 Corinthians 10, I just preached on this yesterday. Everything is permissible, but not everything is beneficial. Everything is permissible, but not everything builds people up, right? What's up, Maurice? What's up, peoples? So when you're comparing Kendrick Lamar to CHH artists, what you're doing is basically saying a guy who has no limits, whether you think he's a Christian or not, he definitely isn't a Christian by his speech, right? Because, And again, I'm not saying oh, if you cuss, you're not a Christian, but I'm saying, though, even the world knows that F-bombs and the ways you say certain things are just vulgar, right? There's certain vulgarities that you, when you use them in a public sense, even though it was art and I understood what he was doing, I have no problem with what Kendrick did. But when we're comparing Kendrick to CHH artists, there's limitations. There's things that I cannot, I've never cussed on any album. So for me, I have to creatively think about how do I express real anguish and anger without dropping an F-bomb? How do I express what I'm trying to express without cursing? I don't even say nigga that much in my raps. I try to use it in a way that's creative and that makes a point rather than just the way I would normally talk or like the way I used to rap, which is nigga was a, we don't, CHH artists, the majority of us, if there are CHH artists that are cussing consistently, many of you would not listen to it. Many of you would be like, nah, I can't listen to that. You would listen to it, right? So my point is when we're comparing someone like Kendrick Lamar to CHH artists and we're talking about he's more innovative, we're not creative, we have to be realistic about that. We don't have the resources. I don't even know Dre's, I don't even know Dre, where Dre lives right now, let alone I can text him and say I need a beat, right? K 
Kendrick, all these guys, Drake, all these guys can do that. We don't have the lifestyle. Many, many artists, many CHH artists are ministers, husbands who stay at home. We don't travel that much. I don't even go on tour anymore. When I drop an album, I'm a, I'm a car artist at this point. I'm a car artist. I drop albums so that you all ride out to them in your cars or in your in your phones with your head, headphones in, listening to them and just vibing with it, whether you like it or not. I don't make music. I don't go on tour because I have other responsibilities. And most CHH artists do. There's no way we can match the lifestyle. And then we're limited. We are limited by what we can say. We're limited. Kendrick can say, like on Auntie Diaries, right? He can say, my aunt is a man now. I'm old enough to understand now, right? He can say all of these things that most of us, if we're going to be orthodox in our views, we can't say because we can't agree. And that stuff, those are the things that the culture is going to react to. See, when we present what we think, because typically it's a from a biblical worldview, the world is not going to like that. Why? Because 1 Corinthians 2, 11 through 14, the man without the spirit of God does not accept the things that come from the spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them. Why? Because they're spiritually discerned. So when we talk about these things, we sound preachy. We don't, we, no one wants to engage with what we're saying because we don't, we, we're not going to say, most of us won't, are not going to say, oh, my uncle's a man now, and I understand now. And then basically, now the song was dope. He made a point about understanding that his uncle transitioned to a man and his cousin did and using the F word, faggot, right? He uses that word, but he uses it to say, oh, I'm not allowed to use that word in that community, but we used to use it to mock him. But if I'm going to use the word faggot, then I got to let a white girl say nigga, right? He talked about a couple of years ago, they brought a girl on stage to rap one of his songs and she was just rapping every word. And then when he said nigga, she said nigga, he was like, oh, oh, oh. And it was a big deal in the media for like 27 minutes. But my point is, like, there's limitations that I have as a believer. So if I want to talk about, and then there's just, and then, so with those limitations, then I have reputation, right? I have a, a church and I'm a Christian minister. I'm a senior pastor of a church of a few hundred people. And I have a church. So even what I present is limited. Okay, let's just be clear. I'm a big dude, right? I'm fat, right? If I did a video where I took off my shirt and just rapped, it would probably go viral because you just don't see fat dudes that can rap with their shirts off, right? It's like the social, the social construct is I shouldn't wear a wife, a tank top, right? But any if you're in shape, you can. If I did certain crazy things, I could go viral. But then my wife would be embarrassed by that. My church might be confused by that. There's certain things that I... Now, Kendrick doesn't do stuff like that. He's more creative in his... But again, even in that creativity, look at who he has at his disposal and what means. Deep fake technology, and that might not be expensive, but like he has means to do certain things that we, most of us Christian artists just do not. So again, I appreciate the... the What I appreciate... Exactly. Oh, some bizarre, right? Bizarre is my man, Maurice. Bizarre from D12 would do something like that, right? If I did that, people would be like, oh my gosh, look at this dude. Then if they found out he's a pastor doing that, it would go viral, but for all the wrong reasons. My wife wouldn't appreciate that. My children might be like, Poppy, why'd you do that? My church might be like, Pastor Kerr, what's going on? I'd probably take the video down, right? I'm limited. Kendrick Lamar is not limited. He's only limited by what he imposes on himself. He's not limited because he's a super, he can do anything and people are like, yo, that's crazy, right? So again, we just don't have, and then you think about the limitations of resources being the video stuff. He's able to get people and spend the kind of money to do the production level. Most artists, when they shoot videos, man, we pay a couple hundred bucks, man. Me and, and, and I, I do videos um, and try to be very creative. And I don't even do, I work with another, another buddy of mine. We do these videos, man. And we do, I, I appreciate this dude. We have done some crazy videos together. And I really, really appreciate that, right? But I don't have the resources. So again, I think if you're going to compare someone like a Kendrick Lamar to CHH and all of that stuff, I think you got to be careful. Because I, now don't get me wrong, I appreciate the challenge. I love the challenge. But I'm, shameless plug, you cannot listen to Serial Killers Smiling Pictures, the album I dropped in December, 
and not say that there's not creativity and innovation that is rivaling the majority of the hip hop industry. And I didn't say CHH. The majority of the hip hop industry could not make an album like Serial Killer Smiling Pictures, the streaming everywhere. Could not make that album. Now, it's arrogant for me to say that about my own music to some people, but I'm being realistic. You, Most of these artists don't make albums better than CHH artists. There's only a few, like a Kendrick, and, let's, and then let's be clear, lastly, last thing, so last thing. The last reason why this isn't a helpful comparison, because Kendrick Lamar is making music that even non-Christians can't make very well, right? This is why, so, so it's not like he's just one of many that CHH can't compete with. Even the world, the secular rap artists can't compete with the kind of music that he puts out. They just can't do it. So like that's why there's all this buzz like yo Kendrick wow you look at all the you, and and people love or, love or hate the album love or hate it again the four criteria that I listed at the beginning of the album uh, helps me appreciate art like this like what Kendrick presented but most secular artists other non Christian rapper they're not banging they're not hanging with him either I mean he's just mopping the floor with people because his content subject matter the way he presents it nobody's doing that nobody's doing that. So again, this is just my 2.2 cents. This is my 0.2 cents. I think if you're going, I think, so we need to be creative, be challenged to be innovative and creative. I love all that, right? Be challenged by that. But the reality is it's an unfair comparison for the reasons that I listed in this video. It's just apples and oranges, fam. Apart from that, it's the same genre of music. It's apples and oranges. It's like, there's a difference between, like, like Steph Curry, by far one of the greatest players ever. I think he changed the game more than LeBron did because he came in and made everyone want to shoot threes. This dude has the finger of God. But you know what? This dude also grew up. Del Curry's son who played in the NBA for like 12 years. Del Curry played for the Charlotte Hornets, and he was actually a decent shooter. He wasn't a big-time scorer, or, but he was a good shooter. So Steph, Steph Curry and his brother Seth, and this dog, they had access to their dad being an NBA player. They had money. They could go to gyms. And even though he went to a small school, he was he had the resources to be a superstar, right, in ways that other people don't. Clay Thompson, the same thing. Michael Thompson did that. So, again, it's going to be different. I remember when, when uh, the Warriors won, and I'm going to close with this, when the Warriors won their first NBA championship, there was a teacher in Oakland who wrote a letter that became public, and he said, uh, please, Steph Curry, please don't come to my school. And he basically said, you're going to come. If you come to this school, you're going to inspire a lot of kids. They're going to be excited. Oh, my gosh, Steph Curry's here. You're going to give them stuff. And then you're going to make a lot of these kids hope and think that they may be able to make it to the NBA when we know if there are 200 million people. Think about this, probably 200, at least 100 million people that play basketball that want to go to the NBA. And, the, and probably a per, less than a 1% of that make it to the NBA, right? So he was like, I don't want you to come here, inspire these kids. They don't have the resources you have. They didn't grow up how you grew up. They didn't have a dad. Some of them don't even have dads that would push them. And they're just going to get further discouraged as they realize they know there's no way they're going to be able to make it. Now, granted, there are people who grow up with these situations. They're good at basketball. They work hard and they do make it. We know that. But the point is, is like you cannot expect everyone to have that same the same resources the same lifestyle the same without the same limitations it just doesn't happen it's not gonna happen so that's my point two cents man serial killer smiling pictures after you get after you after you drink kendrick go back and listen to that album and and honestly tell me it is not as creative or better than anything that almost everybody's doing even i'll even put it beside kendrick even if people don't think it's better it's just, it's unrealistic. We do the best that we can with the resources that we have. And there's a few of us that make really good, innovative and creative music. And I will continue to do so. Serial Killers Life Support dropping next month. Life Support dropping next month. I guarantee you, it'll be a little bit creative. Kirk Kennedy signing off. Appreciate y'all, man, for watching. Holler at me. Let me know what's up. Peace.